Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm taking a look at Topaz Photo AI 2.0. It's the latest update from Topaz Labs for their flagship product. It's got a number of new features. I'm going to walk through it. Uh, this has historically been a product that's had enlargement and denoising and sharpening, but now they're adding lighting adjustments and color balance adjustments that are currently in beta, but I think it shows some promise. And the whole idea here, of course, is to get you the best starting point with your raw files possible. So I'm going to look at two images real quick and kind of show you what's new and talk a little bit about what you can expect from this product. So let's take a look at it. Uh, I've got these two images that I said and they're both down here below. By the way, if you aren't familiar, you can just hover over them and it'll show you what the basic, uh, what's called autopilot has done. In this case, it's removed noise and recovered faces and this one's removed noise. So we're going to take a look at this one. Uh, the previews are uh, already updated for what Autopilot did. And by the way, I want to point out, you can go into Preferences and make adjustments to what Autopilot does. For example, I, I took Resize Type to None. I didn't want it to do any resizing. I don't need any resizing for these photos. I didn't want to wait for the calculation time. But I do want to point out, you can go into Preferences and make adjustments to what Autopilot is doing for you in your images. So basically, no resizing or upscaling. Uh, but this preview, as you can see here, if you hover, it has a little menu that pops out. Images loaded. They detected subject, detected nine faces. This is a busy street scene from London. Noise, all that, that kind of stuff. But historically, I mean, this product has done a great job removing noise and sharpening. And you can see here, and in fact, I'll zoom in even further. By the way, every time you zoom in, uh, it does recalculate it. But, you know, hey, that was pretty quick. Uh, it's certainly gotten quicker over time, but you can see, I mean, it's done a good job of removing noise and that sort of thing. Um, you can turn on or off these different things, but I do want to point out a couple of things. There's now a raw normal V2 and raw strong V2. And you can see here it says normal V2 will replace normal soon. So these are new raw uh, denoising uh, models that are built in and will eventually become standard, it, it appears in the product but it does a great job you can bounce around to different options here to see how they impact the photo and in fact let's just take a look at raw strong version 2 and there you go i mean it's probably a little too smooth you can adjust strength and that sort of thing i'm going to go back to the one that it defaulted to and it chose uh, as i said it defaulted to raw normal v2 but new raw models which are great and then for uh, sharpening as well they've got now standard v2 so there's the standard sharpening and standard V2. I'm going to click that and let that run. And there you go. I mean, it looks fine to me. I don't know that visually I can tell much of a difference without really getting two of them side by side. I just wanted to point out that there are two uh, models, or excuse me, updates to both uh, sharpening and the noise removal. And honestly, I think they're looking great and working great. Uh, two of the cool things that are added are this adjust lighting and balance color. And you can see that they're both in beta. So if I turn this on, um, I am finding, by the way, if you hover, you can click on that drop down. There's an adjustment slider. I'm finding that generally speaking, the adjustment lighting is making it really bright. You can just see that right there. To me, that's just way too bright. So you can pull down the amount of adjustment. Maybe I'll go to like a 10 here just to make it a little bit less intense. Um, again, the goal here, I think, is really to get you the best looking raw file. And that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm personally of the opinion that I prefer to adjust lighting in my host editor. For me, this is great for sharpening, resize, upscaling, things like that. Uh, depending on the image, I may or may not use the adjust lighting. But again, it's in beta. You can adjust it based on this adjustment slider. So as it says here, it's a content aware model to improve lighting and address over or under exposure. This one isn't seriously underexposed, but it did default to, I think it was at 50. I kind of don't remember, to be honest, but let's move it to 50 and just take a look at it. It's going to be way too bright. Yeah, this is way too bright. I, I think like 8 or 10 looked pretty good overall. But again, it's optional. You can turn it on or off, and you can dial in the settings based on that slider. Now, the other thing is balance color. And so again, this is to uh, adjust color balance issues. And again, like I said with lighting, I tend to prefer to do color adjustments. This would be temperature, tint, as well as uh, any other kind of color adjustments. Um, I generally prefer to do that in my host editor. But this is a temperature adjustment, and it essentially uh, aims to correct any kind of color issues that may exist in your RAW file. In this case, it's shot in lower light. In a city, it's a little bit bluer, and it's creating a bit warmer. Um, I don't 
personally like it. I would want to go uh, quite a bit cooler, so I'll pull it down to 40. The point is not how accurate was it in this because it is in beta, but the point is it's there now. So that, that looks pretty good. And in fact, if I back all the way out and let it recalculate, you can kind of see what it does to the photo overall, but it's done a good job of removing noise. It's done a good job of sharpening. And with some adjustments on the lighting and balancing color, I think you can get to something that you may end up liking as a good RAW file. And again, it's a great way to get your RAW file kind of perfect, for lack of a better term, so that your editing may uh, be less involved or take less time. So again, for me, it's really about getting you to the best possible starting point with your RAW file. And there you go. I mean, that looks nice. I probably would do different things with the color temperature overall. Uh, I'd probably go a little bit cooler. Again, this is personal preference and, you know, dial in the slider to suit your taste. But I wanted to give you an example of that. And then we've got one more photo here as well. This one being a portrait and I'm going to zoom in so we can see this a little bit closer. I'll go to 100 and historically and also in this image, Topaz has done a great job of removing noise. So if you take a look at this face here, you can see the, the challenge, I think, especially with skin in removing noise, is it can get really smooth really quickly and it starts to look a bit fake or even kind of plastic. I think it looks nice here, removing the noise without really making that skin look fake. And of course, I can go in and make further refinements if I want. It's selected that raw normal too. If I go raw strong too, it'll of course recalculate and then we can take a look and see what it looks like on the skin here. And there you go. In this case, I think raw strong is too much because it is really getting really smooth, kind of over the top smooth. I think that raw normal two looks good. And again, you've got the, the basic sliders here to uh, adjust the strength. I'm going to go ahead and leave it with the raw model that it chose. I'm going to go ahead and turn on sharpen just to take a look at it. And it's, it's selected standard. So again, it's got to recalculate and kind of figure out what it wants to do to the image. But I generally find that the sharpening and the noise removal look pretty solid. So if you take a look here, like her eyes, I think uh, here on this left side, I think they look fantastic, nice and crisp, and the noise has been removed. And I think the same over here. Eyelashes and things like that are not quite as large on the girl on the right. So on the left, I, I feel like I'm seeing the results a little bit better. But again, you've got different uh, models to choose, including standard V2. Again, it says it'll replace it soon. So I thought I would run that test just to see how it looks and do a quick uh, visual on that one. And there we go, it's updated. And once again, these eyes look great. I mean, I think that looks fantastic. I think the skin is smooth enough in terms of noise removal, but not overly smooth based on the noise reduction we chose. But also I think the eyes look nice and crisp and same with the model here on the right. Um, once again, there's adjust lighting and balance color. I'm generally finding, okay, it defaults to 25. I'm generally finding that it's just too bright to my taste. Again, it's in beta. And of course you have the adjustment slider that you can choose if you want to. And there you go. I mean, you can see that's quite a bit brighter. And in my opinion, also a little bit too yellow. Um, I would pull that down pretty significantly. I'm going to try a seven instead of a 25, just to uh, pull that back a little bit. Um, it is compensating for it being a really, really dark photo. Well, not really dark, but a medium dark photo. And so it's trying to overcompensate, I think. And of course, these AI models are going to essentially evolve over time. There you go. I think that looks a little bit better, a little bit more natural. I do feel like it's added a little bit of a yellow color tint to it. I'm going to go ahead and click on balancing color and take a look at what that does. I can uh, close the sharpening and the noise menu just so that you can see these other things. Oops, a little bit better. And there we go. Uh, it's added again too much warmth for me. I'm going to pull this down by about 10 or 15 and see what it does. Again, um, I'm finding that it's making things, in my opinion, now these are two kind of lower light and kind of not too warm photos. It's making both of these photos pretty bright and pretty kind of warm yellow in my opinion. I don't like that. That's that's too blue. So I'll try 40 just to see how it goes. Uh, the point is it's doing a uh, an attempt for lack of a better term at getting the lighting and the color balance right. And if you're particular like I am, you may or may not like the results. Um, that, that looks okay. It's probably still a little bit too blue, but let's go to fit and let it recalculate. It's probably gonna to be too blue on her dress and that wall because it's picking those up and making them quite a bit bluer. Uh, but the point is you can go in and refine these and kind of dial in those adjustments to get to the raw file that looks best to you. And again, you can always adjust these later. You can bring that raw file back to your host editor. I'm using this in standalone mode, but a lot of you may be using Lightroom as your host. You can send a raw file over from Lightroom, make adjustments and send it back. 
Yeah, still too blue there in those areas. So I would need to play with this temperature a little bit. So maybe 45 is better. But I mean, I'm able to get noise reduction, sharpening, enlargement if I wanted it, some lighting adjustments, and also color adjustments with this new update. So I think it's a really a cool idea to add these in. I think it's going to be a huge help to really, like I said, kind of get your raw file looking the way you want it to look so that you can go in and do your uh, final refinements, adjustments, enhancements, whatever you want to call them in your editor of choice. But that's a quick look at this update from uh, Topaz with Photo AI version 2.0 new raw denoising models, new sharpening models, and then the adjust lighting and the balancing color stuff. It's a great update. I'm pretty excited about it. And if you're using this product, I think you'll be excited too. And especially if you're using it as a plugin from, let's say, a Lightroom, which I think a lot of you do. You got a lot of power and control between those two products to really put together a, uh, a super powerful combination here that works, I think, incredibly well. So that's a quick look at Topaz Photo AI 2.0. If you have any questions, leave them uh, in comments down below. I've got a link down below if you want to take advantage of the sale that they're having here for the next couple of weeks. And thanks for watching, my friends. I appreciate you guys. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, adios.